Well, we had our first snafu with the dog here, guys. Sorry about the audio, but the dog just ripped out <laughs> the TX500 MP, and actually what took the snag here was the uh, USB cable, and uh, <laughs> just imagine if that was not a ruggedized piece of gear. Hey, morning guys, it's the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today I'm out in Portal, Arizona in a campsite called Sunny Flat and I'm out here scouting out land potentially for my field training company. And yesterday I had an interesting uh, experience that I wish I had captured on camera. I deployed my 40 meter NFED here quickly with a friend and I showed him NVIS propagation. So typically terrain like you see behind me, us being in a canyon would be very difficult for uh, communication, but nope, I was able to make contact with my guys 200 miles out where I normally live. And the conditions were so good, I could have done voice. I wish I had captured it, but I was getting back uh, a plus 8 dB signal to noise ratio request report, and the other guys were like plus 10. So we would have been able to get up and over this canyon. In terms of the gear, I'm still running the Everly Stock Fact Track. Love this bag. It's been with me now for four going on five years. And three components we're going to be using is the TX500 MP. This is a radio that's still new to me. Love it. And it's running in the Maxpedition one liter water bottle pouch. It holds everything I need for voice and digital communication. It even has a antenna for uh, in a pinch deployment that is fairly lightweight. But for today, we're going to be using my standard uh, NFED half wave. This is by Tim N9SAB. And then I'm a big fan of digital data modes when conditions are rough. So Panasonic FZM1. So Tim's NFED half wave is pretty compact. Uh, normally this is difficult to deploy in campsites like this because of space limitations, but we're gonna be able to do it. A little bit of RG316 coax, this is 20 feet, and then about 20 feet of micro paracord, and then an S-clip carabiner. I'm a big fan of simple, so I've got the S-clip carabiner connected to a small branch, about maybe seven feet high, and then we're just gonna go ahead and run this guy out all the way to that end and tie it off with some paracord. So I've got a little bit of cordage that already has a taut line hitch. This allows me to adjust the length of this line and I just have it looped over that end of the tree and then going off to the carabiner on the end fed half wave. We're probably a little bit over four and a half feet right now going out into that direction. And then I've got the RG316 feed line going into the picnic area here right to the top of the TX500 MP. And I do have a small kit of connectors that go from N-type. In our case, we're going from N-type to BNC. Next up, we're gonna take our digital uh, mode interface, the DigiRig Mobile, and connect it up to the FZM1. So my friend and I who have twin TX500s, we added some aftermarket silicone caps for the aviation plugs to keep everything nice and waterproof. We are gonna connect the new DigiRig TX500 MP cable to the aviation connectors here. These will mate with the DigiRig mobile, and then we have the short USB cable that will go into the laptop. So pretty small kit. Everything actually fit in this pocket along with a couple of extra goodies, which I'll talk about later. So in terms of software, I'm actually using MCOM Tools Release 5 Build 13. This is a customized version of Linux that I've been developing and it has full plug and play support for this radio and a few others. It has plug and play support for GPS. And you can actually see we've acquired our GPS signal there and it's even calculated our grid square. It's also detected that we have a TX500 MP connected as well as CAT control. So all I have to do now is launch the application. And again, my application of choice these days is JSA call and it's great for doing HF only text messaging, store and forward messaging and message relays among other things. So these are some of the topics I'll be covering uh, more on the channel, but also in the field training exercises, how to use some of the digital modes operationally, whether it's also sending email to your loved ones in an area like I'm in where I have no cell coverage. All right, so what we wanted to do as our first test here is right click on TTP. This will allow me to do a targeted request to all the guys in my group throughout the Southwest and uh, East Coast. And we're gonna do a signal to noise ratio request. This is gonna take uh, 30 seconds and we can see here that we are keyed up and we're running almost full power, about nine watts out of the 10 watts of power. 
and if this is successful we should get messages coming back here of stations that can hear me and they'll give me a report if that all works and i see the guys in my group uh great i'm looking for kcaowl wn7d kk7 umn and 5 mkh so it should be very interesting if we're able to get these guys come back and it'll just take another second or so so you can see here we have activity already we have it looks like six stations in the waterfall that are coming back to me and let's see yep so we have kca owl he is 220 miles he reads me as plus six we could do voice right now and n5 mkh uh, minus 12 so a little bit lower on his side and it looks like the pups just came out to uh to say hello but uh, at this point guys we're, we would be able to do a variety of techniques like send messages i could pass uh requests for people to relay uh for me on my behalf that hey we're okay we're here please contact the other people and my guys in my group are very good anyways guys i just want to show you here low power 10 watts in a canyon remote area no cell this is why hf is so powerful and i encourage everybody to get their license all right guys i'm the tech prepper be strong be safe and be prepared some bonus footage guys so we're out here in the uh, Chiricahuas we went out about a mile we've got canyon all around us we've got water behind us uh, about a mile in and the dog actually just took the freaking TX 500 MP off this rock the digi rig came out and went over there he tripped over the coax over here but uh, right now what we're doing is just making sure JS8 call looks good. We're getting decodes here, and you can see over here in red, we're getting back messages in response to my uh, signal request report. And you can see here my buddy Mike, KC8OWL, 200 miles out, is coming back to us, and it looks like he's got even a message for us. So I'm not gonna go into JS8 call too much, but uh, just wanted to share with you guys that it is possible to do regional communication within a canyon like we are with all of this rock faces able to deploy a very modest wire antenna uh you know through and around trees we're kind of weaving out again using tim uh n9 sab's 40 meter n fed i'll put a link down below but i really want to thank my buddy zach with reaper fabrics uh he's the guy that does uh the man packs for me and helping me out with the TTP land nav kit. In fact, I, you might have one in his back pocket. Nope, nope. not a big deal, <laughs> uh, but we used it to get out here. We were pulling coordinates off of the Garmin uh, Instinct 2X and just had a good old time. So I was just trying to show him some of the real world operating for me. Brand new AO, I'm not used to water, not used to trees, not used to being in a canyon. So just fun time getting out. All right guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.